Hello dear children and welcome all of you to yet another session of physics. Since last few days we are discussing about the topic motion that is chapter number 8 and as I promised in the last tutorial of uh, physics that we will be practicing some of the numericals from the textbook. Today we will do the same. I am going to take you through the lesson today. I will show you some of the pages from the textbook of lesson number 8 that is motion and some of the numericals which are given in the lesson that we are going to discuss today. So this is the first page of our chapter that is chapter number 8 motion and in the first page of the chapter we are um, you know given the information about the concept that motion is relative and if you remember in the very first session of our physics tutorial we have discussed this concept that suppose say you are into the moving bus and when you look outside you feel that the trees are running along, along with you but the person who is standing roadside outside the bus for him you and your co-passenger are moving but for you your co-passenger is at rest meaning is that the perception of motion is different for different individual I may perceive it something else you may perceive it something else and this is what is you know called as motion is a relative concept then the next uh, page that is this is page number 100 of your textbook we have learned the concept of distance displacement speed velocity acceleration all these concepts we have learned we understood all this based on this in the textbook you are given certain numericals so look at this, this is page number 100 of your textbook and along with that some questions are there and one table is also uh, given to you. So the table is between uh, time and distance. If you see the first column, uh, time is written and time is written with equal interval, interval of 15 minutes, 9.30, 9.45, 10.00, 10.15, 10.30. So with the interval of 15 minutes, time is written. If you see the first column of distance, the change in the distance according to time is equal. There is a change of distance of 10 meters, right? So if I compare time and distance first column, that's uniform motion because it is equal distance covered in equal interval of time. But if you see the second column, there the change in distance is not equal with time. It is unequal the first change is 7 meter next is more than that so this change in the distance is not equal when there is unequal change in distance in equal interval of time we call that motion as non-uniform motion so table gives you idea about uniform and non-uniform motion to the left side of the table some numericals are asked based on the concept look at the first question your first question is an object has moved through a distance can it have zero displacement if yes support your answer now see children when the object has moved certain distance there is a possibility that the object may have zero displacement because displacement is what it is uh, the distance between the initial and final position of an object it is the shortest distance between the initial and final position of an object you are given that the object has moved certain distance if after moving certain distance if the object reaches to the initial point once again there is no displacement the initial and final position of the object is same so we can say that in this case when the initial and final position of the object is same in this case the displacement is zero so the answer for the first question is yes the object may have zero displacement only if its initial and final position is same okay so the next question a farmer moves along the boundary of a square field and uh, of 10 uh, meter in 40 seconds so the boundary of a square field is 10 meter and he is taking one round in 40 second 
so 10 meter one side of a square field 10 meter other side 10 meter 10 meter and the total square round he is taking in 40 second what will be the magnitude of the displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minutes and 20 seconds from his initial position now I have given you the solution of this particular uh, question but try to understand children the farm is square in shape one side has length of 10 meter and this way you know all the four sides of the farm are 10 meter 10 meter 10 and another 10 meter the farmer starts from one particular position and takes a round in 40 seconds you are asked how much is the distance covered by the farmer in 2 minutes and 20 seconds and how much is his displacement now i told you in the previous session that first of all your first step should always be convert this minutes into second so 2 minutes and 20 seconds is equal to 140 seconds because 2 minutes is uh, you know 2 into 60 that is 120 seconds and plus 20 that's 140 seconds now in 40 seconds one round next 40 second the second round so total is now 80 second next 40 second that is 120 second the farmer will complete three rounds then we still have 20 seconds left so when the farmer is taking this 20 second he will be completing three and a half rounds now at the end of three and a half rounds where the farmer is reaching the farmer has started from you know position a now the farmer has reached to position C. This is the shortest distance which can be displacement, right? How will you find out this displacement? You can find out this displacement by Pythagoras theorem. You have the other two sides. Find out that. When you find out, you will get the answer as, you know, 14.14 14 meters. But imagine that the farmer will start from somewhere at the middle of the field say from this particular point then towards the end of 3.5 you know seconds or 3.5 rounds the farmer will reach up till this point at this stage what is the shortest distance it is this distance and how much is that it is equal to 10 meters isn't it so displacement depends upon what is the initial position from where the person starts the motion so you have to be very very careful which is the initial position and which is the final position and accordingly you have to find your answer right okay the next one which of the following is true for displacement it cannot be zero no it's displacement can be zero isn't it if the initial and final position of the object is same in that case we say that displacement is zero if the object is moving along a circular path an object starts from point one particular point on a circular path after taking a round the object reaches to the same point once again displacement is zero but what is a displacement displacement of a circular path is the circumference that is 2 pi r so displacement can be zero if the initial and final position of the object is same second question is its magnitude is greater than the distance traveled this is not true displacement is always the shortest distance so its magnitude is always less than the distance or if the object is moving along a straight line then the displacement and the distance can be same right so distance and displacement can be same or its magnitude can be less than the distance but it cannot be more than the distance right children okay then this is page number 102 of your textbook right along with some questions some solved examples are also there if you read this solved examples you will understand like how it is solved and how we have discussed the sums let's first see the first question which is asked there distinguish between speed and velocity I am very sure that you will recollect this very fast and you will be able to write the answer. Speed and velocity, one is scalar quantity, one is vector quantity. 
one needs direction one doesn't need direction and i'm sure you will be able to identify what is that and you will be able to write the answer go to the next question under what conditions is the magnitude of average velocity of an object is equal to average speed now please recollect the formulas when we say average speed it is total distance upon total time when we say average velocity it is total displacement upon total time you are asked under which condition average speed and the average velocity will be same now children if the object is traveling along a straight line during that time its distance and displacement remains the same so if the object moves along a straight line its average velocity and average dis average speed will remain the same the magnitude of both will remain the same clear go to the next sum what does the path of an object look like when it is in uniform motion so uniform motion means what equal distance in equal interval of time so naturally it will be a straight line path isn't it okay the next one is during uh, one experiment a signal from the space ship reaches the ground station in 5 minutes from the space ship the signal reaches to the ground in 5 uh, minutes this is a time given to you what was the distance of the space ship from the ground station you are asked about the distance when the speed of the light is given to you that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second the signal travels at the speed of the light and the speed of the light is given to you you are asked about distance you are given time you are given speed quickly the formula for the speed should come in your mind speed is equal to distance upon time so distance is equal to speed into time but you have to be very very careful for one thing and that is the units given there time is given in minutes speed is given in meter per second so when we are solving the numericals our unit should be in the same um, you know either it should be si unit or it should be cgs unit or it should be the higher units but it should be in the same manner so in this case what will we do we will convert time into seconds so 5 minutes is equal to 5 into 60 that is 300 seconds so distance is equal to speed into time speed is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second into 300 So three three is a nine, and the power of ten will increase by two. So it is nine into ten raised to ten meter. That's the distance. Okay. The answers are also flashing there on the screen. You can refer to the answer. But I think it is easy to understand what we are discussing. This is now page number hundred and three of your textbook, wherein you are given one activity, and at the same time you are given uh, two numericals also. So let's first uh, see the activity. What they have asked that in your everyday life you come across certain types of motions. First, acceleration is in the direction of motion. Now. in your day to day life can you think of some of the examples wherein acceleration is in the direction of motion it's like when the uh, vehicle is moving uh, along a straight line on the road the acceleration is in the direction of motion of the vehicle that's that's the example second acceleration is against the direction of motion so when the you know the moving vehicle suddenly applies brake then you know what happens acceleration is in the you know opposite direction of motion of an object the moment you apply brake during that time acceleration is in the direction opposite to the direction of motion of the vehicle third is acceleration is uniform uniform acceleration means what equal change in velocity in equal interval of time so when the object or when the vehicle is moving along a road and speeding up the vehicle in equal you know change in velocity that's uniform acceleration and acceleration is non uniform non uniform means what see you you are moving along a road and and the, and there is lot of traffic there on the road 
your acceleration is non uniform continuously you are increasing the speed decreasing the speed increasing the speed decreasing the speed in between you are stopping also so this is the example of non uniform acceleration so children if the concepts are clear our day to day life example we can clearly relate with what is asked right come to the questions given there your first question when will you say that the body is in uniform acceleration and non uniform acceleration this is just the examples which we have discussed in that activity part so you can recollect that now we'll move to the second sum okay the bus decreases its speed from 80 km per hour to 60 km per hour the speed of the decreases speed of the bus decreases from 80 km per hour to 60 km per hour in 5 second look at the units children once again kilometer per hour and the time is given in second so naturally either you have to convert second into hours or you have to convert kilometer uh, per hour into meter per second and that is always easy and that is always um, recommended so our first thing what will we find what is given to us what is the initial velocity initial velocity is given to you as 80 kilometer per hour final velocity is uh, given to you as 60 km per hour now 1 km is equal to 1000 meter 1 hour is equal to 3600 second so when i have to convert kilometer per hour i have to multiply this value by you know 1000 upon 3600 if i reduce it to lower term finally i get 5 upon 80 so this particular thing fix in your mind that when you have to convert kilometer per hour into meters per second you just have to multiply the value by 5 upon 18 clear this is our thumb rule kilometer per hour to meter per second is just multiply the number by 5 by 18 because 1000 upon 3600 if you reduce it to lower term it comes to 5 by 18 So our first step, we will convert 80 km per hour into meter per second by multiplying 80 by the value 5 upon 18. That comes to 22.22 meter per second. Convert 60 km per hour into meter per second. Multiply 60 by 5 upon 18. That comes to 16 upon 66 meter per second. Right? Time is given to you as 5 second. Now all our units are similar. so use the formula what is acceleration acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity upon t our final velocity is how much that's 16.66 our initial velocity is 22.22 time is 5 you get the answer in negative that is minus 1.11 meter per second so the acceleration is negative in this case from the sum itself clearly you can make out when the final velocity is less than initial velocity acceleration is always negative clear children come to the next sum a train starting from railway station and moving with uniform acceleration attains a speed of 40 km per hr in 10 minutes find its acceleration a train started from the station so initial velocity of the train will be zero and it has attained how much velocity 40 km per hr how much is the time taken 10 minutes again the units are not same so thumb rule km per hr you will convert into meter per second by which factor you will multiply 5 upon 18 so 40 into 5 by 18 is your first step that's 11.11 .11 meter per second second step time is given as 10 minutes convert that into second so 10 into 60 600 seconds simple apply the formula for acceleration v minus u upon t what is v for us v is 11.11 initial velocity is zero time is 600 now here there is calculation part so you need to have a pencil and a pen start doing your division start how many zeros you will take at the numerator and and do it and finally you will get the answer as 0.0185 meter per second square 
unit of acceleration is meter per second square so it has to be meter per second square right next this is page number 104 and i have taken this page just to give you an idea that we discussed about distance time graph and the distance time graph is drawn there and it is a straight line graph passing through origin when it is a distance time graph it will give you idea about which third physical quantity distance time is related with speed and a straight line graph from origin that means it is uniform speed right children see the table given there the time and the distance now time is changing with equal interval is the distance changing with equal interval no the distance is not changing in equal interval this is unequal distance in equal interval of time can this table give you a graph of uniform speed no it will not give you the graph of uniform speed the graph will look like this see the graph up there on the screen that's non uniform speed can you recollect that we have done all this in the previous sessions i i wanted you to just get a feel that what is given in the textbook we have all done that in the previous sessions right come to the next it is a velocity time graph velocity time is related with which third physical quantity that's acceleration if you see the graph is a straight line parallel to x axis that means it is a graph of what type of acceleration what is the change in velocity there there is no change in velocity it has same velocity so initial and final velocity is same so this shows the graph of zero acceleration or you can write that this is a graph of uniform velocity also because velocity is not changing at all then the part below the graph is shown with blue color can you recollect the area below the graph gives you what it will give you distance covered by the object and in this case the area is shown between the time interval say um, around 1.5 to 4 second so it is a distance covered by the object between the time interval 1.5 to 4 seconds how will you find out area that's area of a rectangle length into breadth so length is your x axis distance and breadth is whatever is the y axis distance that will give you an idea about the distance covered by an object right children one table can you see there on the screen the table is between time and velocity time is given i mean that the change in time is with equal interval of time see the first column of velocity the change in velocity is also equal there everywhere there is a change of 2.5 you know meter per second so this velocity time graph will give you the idea of uniform acceleration straight line graph because equal interval in uh, in sorry equal uh, change in velocity in equal interval of time if you see the next column the change in velocity is not constant it is changing you know you can just uh, um, figure it out it is changing so if i plot a graph between time and the second column of velocity i will get a graph which is curved and which will give me the idea that this is non uniform acceleration right so see this um, this is page number 106 of our textbook your first graph if you see and you can recollect that yes we have done it this is a graph between velocity and time straight line graph means uniform acceleration area below the graph will give you distance covered by the object but between which time interval between 10 to 20 seconds how will you find out area you will club two areas area of a triangle and area of a rectangle you will add it and that will be the distance covered by the object come to the um, you know figure which is right side top that is again a velocity time graph and how the graph looks like the graph is approaching towards the x-axis so this is uniform decrease in velocity that we call as, as retardation or deceleration can you see the next graph this is a zigzag line zigzag line means non-uniform acceleration it is not a straight line graph it's 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 changing the velocity is changing sometimes it is going up coming down going up coming down so that's non-uniform acceleration 
right so if you see this part of a graph it is uniform acceleration this part of a graph it is deceleration here again uniform acceleration here again deceleration so this way you can read the graph with the figure and from the figure you can straight away uh, you know come to the conclusion like which type of motion the graph is giving us yeah come to the next this is page number 107 of your textbook and again some of the questions are given to you and you know these are very very easy questions if you read this i think before my explanation quickly you will be able to answer see question number 1 what is the nature of distance time graph of uniform and non uniform motion just now we 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 discussed distance time graph look at that graph which is drawn towards the right side and the colored um, you know script is the answer but just look at the graph straight line means uniform um, motion and curve means non uniform motion clear what can you say about the motion of the object whose distance time graph is a straight line which is parallel to x axis look at that distance is not changing straight line means constant distance time interval is changing but there is no change in distance means object is at rest isn't it because there is no moment same distance third what can you say about the motion of an object if the speed a time graph is a straight line graph parallel to x axis look at that speed time graph object is moving with constant speed it's not changing its speed so it's a graph of uniform speed right next question what is the quantity which is measured by area occupied below the velocity time graph now to quickly it should come in your mind area below the graph will give you what distance covered by the object in specific time intervals right i hope you are getting it children now this is like so many times we have revised the concept so i think uh, it it should uh, be very clear from your side now yeah this is 109 page number from the textbook and i want you people to have the feel of turning the pages of the textbook you know okay look at this a bus starting from rest so initial velocity zero and moves with uniform acceleration of 0.1 meter per second square so acceleration is given to you and for 2 minutes time is given to you as 2 minutes did that click in your mind that you know you have to convert this time into minutes if it is then i am very happy yes you are getting it so you have we have to convert 2 minutes into seconds right what we have to find out you have to find out speed of the object and the distance traveled we are given acceleration we are given time we are given initial velocity how will you find out the speed acquired by the object speed acquired means actually you have to find out the final velocity of the object and the distance traveled by the object now now see with the given acceleration is given time is given initial velocity is given how will you find out distance so you have to bring in mind the equations of motion can we relate any of the equations of the motion with the things which is given to us in this example if i make use of the formula s is equal to ut plus half at square i can find out distance isn't it so with that formula you find out the distance substitute the values we are converting 2 minutes into second that is 120 second initial velocity is zero substitute u as zero so you get the distance as 720 meter how much is the speed acquired speed acquired means you are asked about final velocity first equation of motion v is equal to u plus at we know the value of u you have value of acceleration you have time also along with you with that you can find out the final velocity or speed acquired by the object right so if you write what is given in the sum and what is given accordingly you can quickly you know recollect the formula which uh, formula you have to apply for the given numerical yeah so come to page number 110 now so with uh, in this case now what i'll do i'll not tell you how to solve the entire sum we'll quickly just jot down what is given to you and you have to recollect the formula which formula is best suited there and then calculation part is your homework 
you will do the calculation at home and find out the answers look at the first sum a train is traveling with the speed of 90 km per hour brakes are applied so as to produce a uniform acceleration of minus 0.5 meter per second square find how far the train will go before it is brought to rest brakes are applied that means acceleration is negative and it is given to you so let's first jot down what is given to you the initial speed of the vehicle train is traveling with the speed of 90 km so initial speed is given 90 km per hour quickly you have to convert that into meter per second by multiplying with the factor 5 by 18 now this should come in your mind now the final speed brakes are applied so what is the final speed zero because bringing it to rest final velocity is zero acceleration is given to you as minus 0.5 meter per second square what is asked find how far the train will move before it is brought to rest distance is asked now i cannot make use of the formula s is equal to ut plus half at square because those many things are not given to me so the other formula which can be best fit over here is v square is equal to u square plus 2as shift the formula according to what is asked you are asked about s that is distance so change the formula bring it to s as the main subject so s will be equal to v square minus u square upon 2a substitute the values find the value of s that is your homework right the next sum a trolley while going down on the inclined plane okay has an acceleration of 2 centimeter per second square see now here acceleration is given in centimeter which we have to convert into meter per second square what will be the velocity 3 second after the start what will be the velocity 3 seconds after the start that means final velocity is asked so the initial velocity is 0 acceleration is 2 centimeter per second square time is given to you as 3 second now see you can do one thing since all the uh, things are given into the smaller unit we can find our answer in centimeter uh, per second so final velocity you can find in centimeter per second and or else you have to convert the final answer into meter per second if it is all small units we can keep the answer as centimeter per second so just substitute the values get the answer question 4 a racing car has a uniform acceleration of 4 meter per second square acceleration is given to you what distance will it cover in 10 seconds after the start distance is asked s is asked recollect the equation of motion s is equal to ut plus half at square we have all the quantities given initial velocity is given given acceleration is given time is also given so distance you can find out by this formula yeah so not very difficult only thing is that the equation should click in your mind look at the fifth sum a stone is thrown in vertically upward direction with the velocity of 5 meter per second square right if the acceleration of the stone during this motion is 10 meter per second square in the downward direction what will be the height attained now see the stone is thrown up so you are given initial velocity when the stone will reach up to certain height its final velocity will become zero acceleration is given to you and you are asked to find the distance distance means how much it has acquired that height that is what is asked to you so u that is initial velocity is given downward is the negative acceleration because it is if the acceleration of the stone during the motion is 10 meter per second square in the downward direction children downward acceleration is is nothing but the negative acceleration which is given to you as 10 meter per second square so same you have to take what is asked that you what will be the height attained by the stone and how much time will it take to reach there so your first formula will be you know v square minus u square is equal to 2as 
make the formula by making s as subject that will give you height a 10 and then make use of first equation of motion to find out time v is equal to u plus 80 you can find out time also yeah so this is your homework children i want all of you to make use of the formula on your own the given things are written over there try and solve it okay so this completes the entire portion of chapter 8 motion we have completed the lesson and now these are some quick examples i want to just uh, you know show you because such type of sums are asked in the exam and this is easy to understand see you are given a speed time graph and based on the graph certain questions are asked which path have constant speed so you just have to you know one liners these are one liner answers if you look at o to a that's the constant speed no that's the uniform speed constant speed means what there's no change in speed so a b is constant speed then the next d e is also constant speed when is the maximum speed uh, uh, reached look at look at the graph the maximum speed is at point c so at point c it is maximum speed 15 meter per second when is the acceleration happen acceleration means change in 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 the speed so from b to c c to d there is up and down graph so acceleration happens there when is the deceleration happening deceleration is happening decrease in speed when is the speed decreasing from c to d the speed is decreasing right before that when is the acceleration acceleration means the speed of the vehicle is increasing so that is b to c and deceleration is happening from c to d this is how you have to read the graph check with this a velocity time graph of moving particle is shown below find the total displacement total displacement means you have to actually find the distance during the time interval when there is non-zero acceleration and retardation now see children the first line if you see there is no change in velocity velocity is constant so that's zero acceleration and the other part last part of the graph is also zero acceleration find the displacement between the time interval when there is non-zero acceleration and retardation so non-zero acceleration is between the time interval 20 to 40 seconds right there first there is uniform acceleration and then there is deceleration so this uh, you know uh, area below the graph how will you find out just divide it into two parts one is triangle one is rectangle so find out the area of a triangle by using half base into height you know find out the area of rectangle by using length into breadth add both the areas and that will be distance covered by the object between the time interval 20 to 40 right children the graph is a uh, you know speed time graph look at the questions asked what is the initial speed of the car if you see the car has started from 10 meter per second so the initial speed is 10 meter per second what is the maximum speed at 10 maximum speed is at b and then after that the speed is maintained so maximum speed attained by the car is at point b which part of the graph shows zero retardation uh, zero acceleration zero acceleration means there is no change in in the speed or a velocity so that's bc that's zero acceleration and which part of the graph shows varying retardation so slowly slowly when the object reduces its speed or velocity that is the retardation that is the curve c to d curve is varying retardation right find the distance traveled in the first eight hours look at the you know time axis 0 to 8 hours area below the graph so you have to you know divide, find out the area of that graph from 0 to 3 second you can divide that area into two part triangle and a rectangle and after that from 3 to 8 um, sorry it's it's not second it's r from 3 to 8 r again there is a rectangle find out area of that rectangle and add the whole area that will give you the distance traveled by the car right children 
so with so many examples so many reading of the graph so many um, things in the lesson i hope now the concept is very very clear and you are ready to solve whatever is given based on this chapter so with this we'll stop for today's uh, session and uh, see you all in, for the next chapter in the next session of physics till then goodbye and take care